Paste Magazine's 300 Greatest Albums of All Time, numbers 300 to 295. Hi, welcome to Garage Geek. I'm currently working my way through four decades of Uncut Magazine's greatest albums of those decades. But Paste Magazine, a, a magazine that I actually used to subscribe to, it went out of business, but it still has an online platform. It released the 300 greatest albums, period. I decided to go ahead and listen to those as well, and I listened to numbers 300 to 295. I do have my iPad in front of me and occasionally I will be reading uh, what the reviewers wrote, but I will uh, also show what they wrote on the screen. So number 300 is Modest Mouse's The Lonesome Crowded West from 1997. Now this album I, I knew about, and I actually think I owned it. I'm not sure, I had it when I was overseas, but I don't think I ever listened to it. This plane is definitely crashing! So Pace Magazine describes this as indie rock. Now, as I was listening to this, the first track, it sounded like Ashton Kutcher was singing to me. And I'm going to say that I liked this album uh, more the second half than the first. This album grew on me. I didn't like it initially, but I did like it the more that I listened to it. Don't they remember the people? They love their old friends and I've seen through them all. I'm going to rank this album a 3 out of 5. Number 299 was Rihanna's Anti. Or maybe I should say Anti. This album is from 2016 and I, I really liked this. And in fact, I, I also like this the more uh, I listened to it. But I really did like it from the first listen. <laughs> So the reviewer wrote, by the time Rihanna released her eighth album, she'd never really ca uh, captured a complete, well-rounded project. Her other albums were basically built around uh, hit singles and not really built around uh, full-bodied cohesion. But Anti changed all of that. As a whole, Anti didn't make itself out to be a radio-friendly smash hit. Rihanna leaned into her superstardom by exploring sonic eclecticism and penning tracks that reached into the pockets of desire, alcohol, and relationships, both through betrayal and empowering love. It's the kind of career triumph that few artists of the last 25 years have had. Again, be love, again, be love again. So like I said, I really did enjoy this album. I enjoyed her singing on it. I enjoyed what she did with her voice. I enjoyed the sonics of this. There were a couple of hits that I had heard on the radio, but I also en uh, enjoyed the other songs as well. Number 298 is Queen's Jazz from 1978, and I, I knew this one as a kid. In fact, I had the poster from this album up on my, my wall, and my dad ripped it down because of the naked bicyclists. This has just some great standout tracks like Fat Bottom Girls and Bicycle Race. Let it all hang out, Fat Bottom Girls, you make the rockin' world go And it's got one of the best openings that I know on an album, that's Mustafa. I love hearing that song, and especially if you want to test out your uh, stereo sound, put that song on. And when the stereo kicks in, you can hear it go from side to side. It's it's kind of like um, listening to uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, which also also by Queen, uh, where it go, we will go from speaker to speaker, side to side. Well, this this song does that as well. I'm a 
This album will also show their diversity in the types of songs. They will have slow numbers, rocking numbers, songs that sound like they're from the 50s and 60s, fun, campy songs. I give this a 4 out of 5. I just love this album. Number 297 was Terry Riley's A Rainbow in Curved Air from 1969. Now, this is an album I've never heard. I have heard uh, some of Terry Riley's other compositions. Uh, so this was a, a real treat for me. Uh, this is the kind of music that I really like to explore and listen to over and over again. So Terry Riley is often uh, lumped in with 20th century minimalists like Philip Glass and Steve Reich, both of whom I really like. It says that A Rainbow and Curved Air isn't just an ambient masterpiece, it's a tour de force in psychedelia. Across two compositions that both hover around the 20 minute mark, fluttering synthesizer and harpsichord melodies are permeated by fleeting tambourine and hand drum rhythms, as well as innovative tape effects. <laughs> Yeah, I really uh, liked this album. I'm going to give this album three and a half stars. Number 296 is The Raincoats. The Raincoats self-titled self 1979 album. So the Raincoats were a driving force in the female-led punk movement and their self-titled the debut cemented them as icons of feminist punk. Their debut became a corner store for many riot girl bands for its unapologetically messy production, off-kilter rhythms, and vulnerable yet snarky lyricism. <laughs> I had fun with this album. This is this this is the type of punk album that I enjoy. Uh, we're gonna talk about one in a minute, which I did not enjoy. Uh, this was fun. This this sounded like they were having a good time. I also liked the way that the music would change. Like they would be a cappella, then they would be jamming, and then they would be slow. So even though this was punk, there was a lot of variation to this album. I hear the music. I'm going to give this album three out of five stars. And the last album that we're going to talk about today is Bad Brains, a self-titled album from 1981. The reviewer says, Recording the Bad Brains in the early 80s must have been like trying to photograph the moment a tornado touches down. So the, the article goes on to say how influential and important this album is. Uh, I had a real problem with this album. I could see why this is important. Punk is a genre that I am just not into, where it's basically a lot of loud playing and people screaming. <laughs> Now, I know I'm going to get into a lot of trouble for that because a lot of you out there really do like this type of music. I, I just don't. So I, I forced myself especially to listen to this one at least eight times just to see if I could overcome that. And I never really did. I'm not going to say it's a horrible album. But another problem I had with this album is it, it seems schizophrenic. You would have these wildly punk songs where people were playing very loudly and screaming. And then there would be the, a reggae number. And I would be like, what? And it was like so radically different. So I didn't understand what was this album? Was it trying to be punk or was it trying to be reggae? It didn't seem to overlap the two. Like, it, there weren't like punk reggae songs. It was either straight on full punk or typical reggae. It really did feel schizophrenic to me. I guess I'm just not a punk fan at heart. I would give this album two stars. Hated it. Now I know Vinyl Richie and Hellion Rebellion are probably gonna be mad at me for saying that, but that's just the way I feel about this album. 
So what did you think about my my ratings of these albums? If you think I'm totally off, especially on the punk ones, please let me know. That is totally fine. We can't all like uh, the same music. If you love the Bad Brains album from 1981, please let me know why. I will listen to it again with fresh ears after I've heard what you have said about this album. So I want to thank everybody out there for the support. So I want to leave you with this. I probably, I should probably take my own advice and not review the bad brains so harshly, but please, please try to be more intelligent.